a little bit here so you guys can see what we're working on. Kind of pull them apart. That's one thing as well right now, like everything's mixing together really well in terms of the color and the color theory. Uh, the materials is what's going to help bring them out as well. So you see the metal on the on the wheel, that's going to be more shiny so it's going to separate a lot of these elements as well as the, the medallion on the back, the self-illumination, the things that glow more in the night, like the dagger in its mouth, the eyes, the little uh, green thing there, you know, all those things are going to uh, pull away once we have materials finished. But uh, right now it's all colors. We started painting some of the balance light as well, and this red uh, tendrils of the do-rag. And the glow kind of bleeding into the open sections that the arrows went through. A lot of balance lighting painted on there. Same with this, like the top of his loincloth. Painted some of the glow from the fire special effect that is in-game by, by default. And I think I started cleaning up a little bit under the hook. This had like all sort of like lion arrows from the bake, which is normal, but I went in there and started fixing all that stuff up. And also painting more greens into the black shadows. We don't want black shadows, we want colored shadows. Even if it's a dark color, we want those to be colored, not black. Black, you should not be used. Like, no, no, for this kind of stuff, especially. Okay, sorry about that. Was that an artist asking for uh, some help? Took care of that quick. And uh, you can see I started painting some of these uh, green shadows and green uh, kind of gl it's, they're almost like glows, but they also bring in the the other greens that are kind of like the shadows or the the decayed or aging, you know, kind of feel that we went for the whole underground um, pirate aging thing instead of just dirt or rust or you know whatever it is. We went with more like the barnacles, and the, the sea life kind of growing on him. So maybe the, all this green stuff is kind of like the moss or the old water that got stained onto his body. And at the same time, that helps create a gradient towards the ground and helps ground him and makes it to the, 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 the background a lot better in the environment. This is great. What happened to our music was... Can I change this? Uh, my partner with any upcoming tournaments. You know what, Craven? I haven't spoken with any tournaments in uh, lately. We're still partnered with with Starladder, but we have to wait for uh, all the new workshop tools to get released before we can actually publish or push in our hero bundles for Starladder. So that might have to wait uh, till, I guess, not this season, but the following season for Starladder. So I don't know. We gotta wait until those tools are out. Axe needs more, like a million more axes. <laughs> he has a lot, yeah. Uh, how long have I been working with 3D modeling and texturing? I got started in 1997 when I was a complete noob. That's when I got started. I started messing around with Half-Life 1. And then I got my first professional job a year after that. This beat amazing. So good. Oh, this is from No Time to Explain, I think. How am I gonna explain how this set relates to Clinks? Actually, we did think about that, man. Uh, so what we had going on for this guy is he still was killed by the... Actually, no, he killed the demon that was cursed by a wizard. So he's still that. Um, and then he, uh, he took the dagger that was in the demon's lair so that he can kill the wizard that cursed the demon with it. 
You're following me, right? Yeah, okay. He just happened to be a pirate instead of just uh, whatever he was in his other life. But it still works out great. It's all good. Alright, let's open up our texture here. Let's see, I got uh, the weapon open. I don't think I want to work on the weapon tonight. Uh, let's work on the head. Uh, what else we got going on here? And we'll work on the shoulders, which are pretty far ahead, which is great. And what was the other piece? The back. Where's the back? Back, 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 back. The... the wheel. I was looking for back, but it's actually called... There we go. V uh, VNA Pirate? Hey, no, not yet, man. It's uh, quite a bit of texture and work still to do, but it's definitely shaping up. Coming along. Yeah, the lore's kind of cool. I mean, some people don't care about it, but when you do add it in there, the people that do care love, you know, to have that extra layer of, uh, of depth to the character or to the set. How old am I? 34, man. Thank you, uh, v Vina Pure. Am I saying your name right? Probably not. Yeah, we. I definitely spend a lot more time on the textures. Uh, I mean, uh, we can make it a lot more simpler for Dota for in-game because this gets thrust down. But I like doing it like even even more polished than it needs to be for two reasons. Well, for three, it's gonna actually come out better in Dota uh, if you really look closely. Uh, but also for our poster piece, which we want to turn into prints, want to make sure that all the details are there and it just looks amazing when we do that loading screen and poster that we'll make into physical prints. And the other thing is so we can show people uh, how to do it, you know, uh, all the way if they want to, you know, maybe learn a little bit more deeper stuff to take into cinematic characters or loading screens or things like that. So I think if we do it this way, we, we kind of knock all those three things out at the same time and everybody wins. Takes us longer, but that's okay. I look 26? <laughs> I know, man. I look a lot younger, which is freaking awesome, right? I couldn't iron anchor that can't be bent act like a bow. Well, you know... <laughs> um, this is a magical skeleton walking around with no tendons. Uh, shooting magic arrows from a magic anchor that magically bends. We're gonna go with that. All right. This was a triumph. I'm making a note here. Huge success. It's hard to. All right. Let's see. What do we start? Let's do the head a little bit. I'm looking at this piece for a bit. Your science. We do what we must because we can. <laughs> Springy. <laughs> All of us, except the ones who are dead. But there's no sense crying over every mistake. You just keep. I'm self-taught, Oklahoma. And the science gets All right. So uh, what I like to use is. Uh, but a uh, 19 soft 
well, it's a hard edge brush, but it's a soft brush in terms of its flow and opacity. So if you guys see right here, anybody that's interested in uh, this particular brush that I like using for uh, painting uh, painterly, illustratively, uh, here, let's do so. Well, I, there's, all the highlights are kind of done on the on the headpiece, but I guess we gotta work on the tendrils a bit more. They're kind of kind of dark. We need more reds in there. So let's see over here. We're gonna grab maybe a little bit more of this darker red. So I'll have a 70. Well, that's kind of high. Let's go 65, 45, 45 opacity, 65 flow. With this kind of harsher brush. And with that, you can actually start getting nice painterly brush strokes, and um, and then uh, work in as working in as almost like layering this color over top slightly. So you kind of you're rendering this gradient yourself manually, and you get rid of a lot of these darknesses. Darknesses. Or Eddie Murphy. So we kind of knock out all these dark. These are all alpha, so we don't have to worry about these guys. We're gonna kind of darken the edges a little bit. But yeah, this this stuff is alpha, so don't worry about those guys there. I'm just looking for the other edge pieces that are a little bit too dark. So this is, I think, this is part of the knot on the back of his head. I'm gonna line that up a little bit. And over here, it's a little bit dark, so I'm gonna bring this up a little bit brighter. And then we'll blend it in with those greens that we used for uh, shadows. For the really deep stuff, which is kind of like the ambient occlusion. And oh shit, I think I saw Cedric, and I missed your po your message. The Lord base sets are the coolest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I thought I saw you in there, Cedric. What's up, buddy? Good to have you. Welcome. Uh, Dora Agent, hey Manny, have you seen this set on uh, game already? Uh, what set are you talking about, man? Right now I'm gonna lighten up the shadow a little bit. Especially towards the top, so we create a little bit of a gradient. Uh, it's some painterly. <clears throat> a little too dark here. In here, and we'll use some more of these greens to blend these guys together. But right now, I'm blending the 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 edge of the red first. Maybe a little bit into this orange as well, which is kind of the light on his face. It's lighting this stuff up. Bring some of those reds, mixing in there a little bit better. Came down here, a little too dark. A little too contra contrasty for my liking. All these little things add up. Get a more professional feel and look for your character. Working on these textures in your Photoshop right now. Oh my god! Not sure what happened to my brush there, it just kind of went crazy. Hey, Live Workshop streaming, look at that! If you guys joined our Steam group right below, you'll get a notification when we go live. Two of them, to be exact. All right, Photoshop, don't mess with me. What is that? Why'd you put a dot there? No, I'm still not gonna take that away. There you go. The memory sometimes gets bugged up when we're streaming. All right. Yeah, see, it starts lagging for some weird reason. And once the memory kind of kicks in, it's it's cool. Put the affinity to it a little bit higher. Yeah, it's kind of crapping out on me. Sometimes just zooming out kind of fixes it until it gets the memory back to use it more into Photoshop. I'll have to mess around with that. All right, so I'm gonna save this and open it up back in Soft Image, and we'll zoom into one of these sections that if they're quite dark, you guys can see the all the little changes that we just did now. You see a lot of these sections kind of brighten up. There you go. <coughs> Excuse me. How come I didn't use the Cintiq, by the way? Um, you know what? I, I used the tablet for so long that I got used to not having my hand occlude half of the screen. 
And at the same time, uh, the synthetics that I used in the past, they've had a little bit of a lag to them, to the brush strokes. It's not as as one-to-one -one as a tablet. Uh, so that's something that I got used to and it kind of bugs me about the Cintiqs, but maybe the new Cintiqs are taking care of that. Maybe they're they're uh, they're getting that fixed up. So if they're fi getting that fixed up, I look forward to trying those out again. But yeah, for now, I'm um, uh, really happy with my... What's going on back here? I think this is where it goes behind uh, the wheel a little bit. So we'll get... It's a little bit darker here, but it's getting a little too dark and a little too busy. So we're going to clean up some of that detail. Uh, what section is it? It's over here, I think. So let's see. Grab a little bit of this lighter uh, red. Lighten up this section here. And eye connection will also lighten up over here. Then we'll start rendering this by hand a little bit cleaner. A little bit brighter. I don't like how dark this got. It doesn't need to be this dark. I mean, we want it to be darker, but not this not this much of a change. It, it needs to act more of a contrast. The contrast is more important for us. Uh, the contrast between the, the, the red durag and the wheel, rather than the shadow from red to highlight red on the durag itself. That's why I'm kind of killing a little bit of the shadow. Re-rendering it by hand, kind of. But the bake itself gave us a really good starting point. Which is super awesome to have. Gonna bring these guys up a little bit more this way too. We'll grab the same color for the other side. Brighten this stuff up. Give it into the shadows a little bit. Way too dark. Don't need it! And this guy hooks up with the other piece. One whole piece, so it's got to be this piece here, which goes really bright all of a sudden. If we see this, yeah, right down here. Move this out of the way again. Right there is the cut, so we're gonna marry those guys together a little bit better. I mean, the cut is, is acting like that because it's a little bit of a, a, a shadow change. More light will hit it because of the, the angle, but we still want to kind of fake that it's it's almost the same color. It'll look better in contrast. We'll bring those highlights all the way over here. These guys match up. Paint right over this stuff, nice and painterly. Alright, let's try that real quick. Freaking sea fighting. Because all the office and self damage doesn't like it. There we go. Bring this guy back. See, that red starts flowing out a lot better, he starts noticing it a bit more. Um, it's still way too dark in here, so I'm just gonna go crazy on it and lighten it up. Let's grab a little bit of that shade there. Just go a little crazy here and highlight it all. You can always fix it up. Get nice and smooth, but first I want the contrast to be nice and noticeable. And at the same time, kill some of this detail. It's getting a little too detailed in here. Fun to be Harder to make readable, so I'll kill some of these lines. Maybe add that contrast in there with a fuller color. Darker. And we'll turn that into a nice gradient across towards the bottom. I 
maybe kill this line. It's getting a little bit weird here. Maybe make it more of a green. Maybe this highlight kind of creates that little line contrast. A bit of a different color. So, nicer. We'll pull some of these brights into the edge as well. So they become noticeable. Time. Let's see this guy's change right here. Getting better. Slowly but surely. Hey, what's up, Prudence? Oh shit, Val, what's up, man? Good to have you, sir. Pirate clinks. <laughs> paintbrush by paintbrush, man. Let's get in there. Hello, Concon. This is for Dota 2, a character named Clinks. Making a new set for him. Such a long time since the last stream. Oh man, come on, we, we streamed last week. Since the last stream, you made it to 4.1? Holy shit, dude. I just, like, I'm almost back at my 3k after being in super terrible team. Uh, how do I uh, do the textures connect to the model? Uh, Jay asks. Uh, well, I have my PSD file actually attached to the materials that's attached to the model in Softimage. So every time that I save my PSD file in Photoshop, XSI notices it and updates the viewport with the PSD texture on it. Alright, Sumcast, we'll see you next time, man. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you t more than likely tomorrow. Will do. Streaming at a reasonable time for you, the Val? Yeah, yeah, we tried to stream early, man, so let's see how long I can keep it up. This is day one, like I was saying. Good background for crunching bugs. Hells yeah. Oh, thank you, Rots. Appreciate that, man. Yeah, there's a lot of painterly. I mean, the, the, this back item, we haven't really touched it at all, like, in terms of hand painting it. So it's very... It's right now, it's really running just on a bunch of... Uh, light passes that enemy baked out for us from our C brush and materials and lighting and all this stuff that he set up. Uh, but once that's all in there, you know, at this form, I can actually go in there and hand paint over top of that. And um, this this upper part of the wood is the only part that I've actually hand painted a little bit on this back item so far. You can see how much more readable it is than the rest of the, the, the item. We'll make everything, you know, kind of reach that kind of level of readability and painterliness. That's a word. But right now we're kind of cleaning out some of the extra details that are on this do-rag. Uh, this head item which consists of the hair, the do-rag and the tendrils. Whoops. Hey, come on now. There you go. So this is the head item. All, the, all these uh, four pieces, I guess, are for the head item. Which is usually just horns or a helmet for clinks. So yeah, we went out and about to add some extra bits to this thing. We are pretty cool. Even make some uh, lighting into the hair from the fire from his chest. Uh, con one we submit this to the workshop. If Valve likes it, they put it into the game and it gets sold and it's actually part of Dota 2. <laughs> the barnacles, they're real, man. They're real out. All right, let's clean the rest of this up. It's still way too busy. To moving it a little bit faster. See all these little extra details here? We don't need them! Eat them up. More into a flat color. Now this is like a line, but again, we don't need that line to be there. And use color. Brightness to create that. And just render this stuff out. Flatter colors, be more readable.
Okay. This part. Don't need that to be so dark. Color. Alright. Better. Just getting a little busy. Whoops. Color brush here. Bring that up more into flatness. Push this bright highlight more into a flatter spot as well. All these guys. Flat! Okay. A lot of different kind of contrast things happen here with uh, the... It's almost like a material uh, part of the bake and we want to get rid of it. Use more of those flat colors I'm talking about. And at the same time create a, a, a gradient by hand. lighter color here. Uh, the free barnacles. Do I ever use ooh, do we ever use viewer suggestions for sets? Merely curiosity. Uh, yes, well not 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 necessarily for sets, but more for sections of the set or little or parts of the set. Or even item, a whole item. Like uh, we were doing a weapon for our Queen of Pain set, and we're developing the whip, the metal whip that we constructed for her, that works with the physics in game, which were looking incredible. And we already had like a test version of it, and somebody in the chat suggested that we put the orchid into the whip somehow. So um, we thought it was a great idea. So we decided to implement it into the uh, the handle of the whip itself. So we we created the Orchid Malevolence um, on there since it actually started, it even became part of the name of the set. So, uh, yeah, mostly in that sense, you know, some really good ideas come out. We try to uh, either bounce ideas off of them to actually work into the art direction or the initial design of the set, or if something happens towards the end of it, like that part did, then we try, we would implement it into the atom in question. Good idea is a good idea, man. And we're not stupid or conceited enough not to listen to them. You guys uh, help us out a lot sometimes, which is awesome. But hell, man, uh, getting suggestions from the public that plays the game, you know, it's always good to have more, more brains on some things sometimes. See how this is looking. Uh, it's gonna be, I guess, part of this over here. If you guys wanna keep a close eye, and a lot of these sections over here. Oh yeah, look how much cleaner that looks already, just from those like five, ten minutes we spent on it. You know what, Spider Penny? We have actually a pretty good idea for a techie set, even though I can't stand the hero, but the idea is really good, so we might end up doing it one day. 
<laughs> yeah, let's not talk about Tekkies. I know, Tekkies players always like laugh out loud after they get a kill and you just wanna fucking... Ah, oh, what a shitty hero. Let's not talk about it. Supposed to be a chill stream. No raging. And let's see, this is getting really, really dark as well. I'm gonna light this up. many darks over here so I'm gonna clean this guys up as well lessen the contrast let more of the color do the shouting from a distance and we'll add a little bit of extra highlights here to the edges make them more noticeable too and this is mostly for dota resolution not really to be used for like cinematic characters or things like that. It's kind of, it's almost like a sharpening when you're, uh, when you zoom out and scale down the texture at the same time for Dota. Makes the edges just scream out loud. They look, they look really, really good. You see really good examples of this on the default model for uh, Phantom Lancer. Uh, I'm not sure what artist did this at Valve Software, but he did a fantastic job with uh, getting all those edges to scream out, and this is the, the trick that he used. Technique. I will do the same. So yeah, I'll zoom out a little bit and you guys will see those little edges just pop out just because of those little edges that we painted on there. Okay, I made them a little too small. But that. Ah, they did clean up, but they actually need to be way brighter to actually contrast out. We're a little too zoomed in on this image, so they didn't really scream out as much as I wanted to. So let's use a, a stronger brush and we'll make those guys come out now. Maybe even brighter, I think. More contrast. And they need to be thicker too. A little bit too small. Should help a little bit. There we go, that's what I wanted. I would say we even need a lot more green in this section, it's so little. We need to fake the scale. Hey, thanks, Joe. You have zero credits. <laughs> Oh shit, here. Um, 
You can check your credits again. And actually, while we do this, I'm gonna start this bar at the bottom. There we go. So you can see right below here. I've implemented this new bar. Um, I asked the developers of this program that I used to unlock the minutes. Because they're kinda this the amounts of seconds you can have for the bar are locked at 1000 seconds. And I need a lot longer than that. So what I'm using this bar at the bottom for, you can see it's starting the right below the W. And it'll keep growing all the way to the uh, over there somewhere. Uh, every time we that bar reaches its end, we can switch over to uh, the Undying or another project that we're working on. So the way that I had to set it up is I had to do it in thirds. So we get three of those bars to fill up and then we'll switch over to the Undying. And that will cover about uh, 50 minutes or so. Every 50 minutes we'll switch over. Hello Stenia, what's up? What new setup we're working on? Well, this is Clinks, and we're working on Undying as well. And we have another set that we're working on as well, which is Gyrocopter, but we haven't had time to work on him lately. Oops. Go. All right, let's uh, let's paint this a little bit more green so it's more noticeable. Let's grab some of these. Um, that's a pretty good color there. Oh, that's kind of harsh. Oh, that's because we went up. Okay, back to the 40s. There we go. Up out. One, two. Worry about this big highlight sections first. And then we'll worry about uh, getting the gradient pushed across outside of it. But we definitely want this stuff to pop a little bit more than what it's doing right now. This will do the trick. Oh, that's a little too dark. Oh. And then we turn that into a nice gradient. A little bit brighter here. It's like a Beatles vibe to this this remix, doesn't it? What's this from? It must be from a game. Let me check what this is from. Now I'm, I'm curious. Oh, this is from Tiny and Big soundtrack. Okay. All right, we'll roll with it. It's all good. See that quick update there? The section right here. Mm. Better. Now we need to create the gradient all the way around so it kind of dies out. Right now it's getting cut up uh, right here too much. So many darks here too. Clean all this section up. Maybe brighten up this, this middle part. 
Or this, this red. Ah, deselect. Is this time force? Right? This is a little time force. Turn down the music a little bit. Let's get out of the way. Hmm, actually, hold up. I gotta get eat up. Back here. I think I know why I was doing that before. LODs messing with me. Let me see how many polygons I have in this thing. Maybe I can use another polygon there. Four seventy nine, is that right? Out of how many? You can use eight hundred polygons for the head. We're only at 400. What? No. Okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna add some polygons down here. <laughs> That's we can. Get back where was it? Oh no, it was there. Right. Bit of a curve on there just because we have the polycam for it or LOD zero. Just got back. I'm sure, the clipping is not super crazy. And yeah, that's not too bad. But if somebody doesn't have the back item, I don't want this thing to clip through his belt. So that kind of fixed that. Uh, it's looking better. I am drinking a blue moon at the moment. Needs more CK. He's finally back in the meta. Cedric, man, you're dude. I ugh. once those tools get released, dude, we're gonna have. Uh, here, I was actually making a list earlier today, so check this out, okay? Says that we have 100% ready. Lone Druid, Bloodseeker, uh, Earth Spirit. No, sorry, uh, Ember Spirit, uh, Queen of Pain. Uh, Brewmaster. Uh, five hero bundles for Star Ladder. Heroes that we have like 95% of the way there. Just needs like to finish the polishing of the textures and some materials. Our Life Stealer, the Mummy set. Our Legion Commander set. Actually, no, that's more like at 60, 70%, but it's looking really good already. Uh, we have uh, two items in game already with uh, cloth bones and physics and a new animation post for it with the shield and, and all that. Uh, the Chaos Knight set is about 95% done. Mm. And then other sets that are about maybe almost close to halfway done. Uh, we have a Death Prophet set. We have a Nature's Prophet set. Ball, shout out. We started a career. We have uh, the Abaddon set that we have uh, most all the low poly done and the mount already finished 100%, which you guys can see over there, top right. We have the Undying set, which is about, I want to say, maybe 30% there. You guys will see it uh, once this bar fills up three times over. And what else we got? So many fucking sets, you guys. We Oh yeah, the Gyrocopter. Our Viking Gyrocopter, which uh, most of the low poly is done already. So we'll be transitioning into UVs and Seabrush pretty soon with that guy. What else we got? Yeah, that's a pretty good list, right? That's like 13, 15 sets, 15 sets, plus the five hero bundles. Uh, 
That's right, Val. Right. I gotta I gotta block out that tree and so you can get going on it. Uh, Ghost Jaw. Yes, the anchor is his bow. Check it out. So he'll hold it sideways like this, and the special effect string will spawn uh, right from there when he shoots. So yeah, the anchor. <coughs> excuse me, the anchor is his bow. Holds it kind of like that. A little bit further out. Right. Yeah, the gyro is looking pretty. Uh, he's got quite a bit of character to him. Uh, he's got his huge beard and uh, all this fur on him, and the, the entire thing is a long boat. So yeah, hopefully we can we can do it justice and see brush any the textures when we get. Okay, uh, it looks like we haven't really painted the hair either. So, and I bring out some of this, some of this lighting the hair. A little bit more painterly. Reheatable. Noticeable. Just more of the metal section. I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit. Highlights on there. With uh, his gold earring at the end of his, I don't know, at least dreads here. Fire dreads. Shadow at the bottom a little bit nicer. A bit lighter towards the tip. A little bit sharper. Gonna brush these guys in. This is super tiny on this on the thing, but you guys are seeing it super blown up, so just don't worry about it. Not being 100 percent perfect. Uh, what do we got? Epic Monkey, what's up, man? Glad to have you join us. Epic Monkey. Okay, that looks okay. Grab a little bit of this color here to make the other highlights, which should not be as lit up. A little bit flatter as well. These greens are a little bit nicer, nicer of a blend. We're getting way too dark. I'm gonna get rid of that, that black color. Use more of this dark brown. Dark desaturated red, maybe. Gonna meld them together a little bit nicer. We'll bring it over this way too. Interesting song. Like a boss fight. So tense. That's enough of that one. A little bit nicer. Nice little blends. And maybe this song is super quiet now. Oh, what is this song? Oh, oh fuck, you can... What? Bone with marbles cannot be found. One second, guys. Alright, there we go. 
And uh, let's see what piece we're working on. It was uh, this middle tendril here. And it looks like it already updated it. Yep. A little bit cleaner than his brothers around. If you guys can notice that, change it all. <laughs> it's so little, it's, it's not really worth doing too much in it more than the highlights. So let's just do the highlights. We shouldn't spend a crazy amount of time on this part. I'll pop this guy's out a little bit. Do a pretty good job, I think. Don't need to be more, much, much more than that. Okay, this guy's could use a little bit of a punch. And we can throw the greens. Greens, I definitely want to clean up here. Much black. part of that was. I think it was this part? No, it's this part up here. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Way nicer. The chain should probably wrap around his hand. We are out of polygons for that, man. How's he holding the bow? Oh, we have a little handle for it, man. Can you not see the handle? You got a little handle there? We got you, man. Where's the handle? What we're working on? Oh, the hair. Okay. The custom animations. Uh, so our team member Abyss FX uh, has been doing our animation work, and he uses 3D Studio Max, I think, for the animations. I think I'm gonna clean up this whole area up. I don't want it to be this dark. Not much of a change. Being too too busy. Be cleaner. Then with this part up here. Bend that up more into a flat collar, running all the way in the middle. Go all the way down here. Okay, it's looking a lot cleaner. And I think we wanted more... I would want like a brighter red over here. Maybe, maybe something like, like this guy. Not sure. 
it's too much or not, but I'm gonna try it here, super flat and strong, pressing really hard down on my brush. Then we'll grab uh, that color, paint it over the middle section. How we paint, how we render manually. And then softly brush them in and keep color picking the color next to it. And brush those stuff together really nice. So you get it to blend exactly how you want it. Likes mudging, but <laughs> the correct way. <laughs> Alright, so let's see which part was that. I think it was this part here. Much nicer. Speaking of teaching, is any cool stuff at your website forums? Uh, so the forums are a place right now on the website where people uh, will ask questions and show what they're working on and get feedback or whatever from uh, other people from the community. Uh, but the new website design is gonna uh, incorporate a whole new feature to actually uh, be designed to give you guys feedback directly onto the piece that you posted without having to search through a forum or whatever. It's all going to be localized within your own little profile through into your own resume section of your critiques. And it's going to be fantastic. So uh, just wait and see. But meanwhile, yeah, there's the forums there. Fire. Fire burn DK set has uh, issues with the hitboxes. I have no, I had no idea. I haven't heard about that. Ever consider doing teaching or doing some streams with basic lessons? Um, not necessarily for like the this just streaming like lessons, but we have done like tutor streams where we grab somebody's art and we uh, we suggest ideas on how to fix it, whether it's the the sand work or color theory or volumes or sculpting or you know anything f uh, across the board. Uh, but beginner lessons would be kind of cool. But maybe that falls into more of like a tutorial. I didn't even think about doing more of a stream for that. So we have discussed ideas for doing like, uh, you know, like no one work does workshops with like a set number of seats. So you have like maybe 15 seats open for a lesson that people will pay for and get one on one time with uh, with a teacher and do a whole character or whatever the whatever the lesson is. But uh, yeah, I mean, it just comes down to. Uh, finding the time to incorporate that into our website and, and into our team, but right now we're focusing on these sets, we're focusing on the stream, we're focusing on redesigning the website to make it uh, a huge community where people can uh, really get a lot of uh, um, a lot of exposure and uh, help. So that's what I've been redesigning for the past few months. Is it gonna have a pet parrot? You know, dude, we, I, I did think about doing like a little skeletal parrot on him. Uh, but it would just be lame if it didn't have animations attached to it. And we're not planning on doing any special things for this guy because we want to release it as soon as possible so that it just works right off the bat for Valve. And if you do, if you do special animations or special effects or things uh, that are that more technically um, challenging, that are not ready for Dota for Source 2, then it would just sit in the workshop for a long time. So right now we're focusing on things that just work straight off the bat and Bob can just put it straight into the game. Uh, so that's why all other sets are on hold right now too. There was a reddit thread on the hitboxes for the dude. Gameplay bug section. I wonder. Because here's the thing, man. Some of the models are scaled in the viewport when you're outside of the game. And then when you're in-game, that their size gets, I guess, scaled to the regular size. So maybe there was a, an issue there with the scaling when on that particular set. I don't know. It could be a million things. There's so many bugs in, in, in game engines. Could honestly be like a hundred things. <laughs> so I'm just guessing one of them might be, which is probably not it. You guys would be surprised at the crazy bugs you'd get on... 
Even AAA Studios, you get some really messed up bugs. You're like, how the hell did that even happen? And it, pff, thousands of bugs per month. Insane, the complexity of uh, game engines and artwork. Pretty amazing. Ask File, he can tell you, even just the iOS, how complex that shit gets. What kind of bugs you, you run into. Even from uh, much simpler games. He's working on a, a new game called uh, Go Home Pigeon. And it's gonna be fantastic. Pigeon Go Home. That's the name. Sorry man, I almost messed it up. How much cleaner that section is? Let me show you guys what this looked like before we uh, started doing our painterly layer. I'm gonna go ahead and save it. But here, you guys will notice the change on everything here. Boom! <laughs> so that's, yeah, see that's quite different. Even this whole section looked like how dark it is. I mean, we still need to work on this section down here. Uh, but here, I'll, I'll resave it with our layer, our painterly layer on. Notice the dramatic change here. Uh, section, well, this entire section. It's drastic. See that red? It's a lot more readable now, and in contrast now, the wood pieces and the, the metal. The medallion in the middle. We want it. And we'll do highlights, a uh, last pass, to get all the edges kind of to pop out and things like that. But all the gradients and the colors are definitely working a lot better. Yeah, yeah, and especially a game like Dota that has like uh, over a hundred characters with just like thousands of spells that interact with one another. I mean, the the branching of code across those things is has to be the biggest nightmare in the world. But yet people still will... F I mean, it, it, and it's understandable, you know, people don't understand how complex game engines are and how much things get it. Um, they get a... Uh, messed up from uh, changes that you really don't think are gonna impact other things. So, you know, something breaks in the game and people are like, you know, people go crazy. It's like, guys, like, this is insanely crazy complex thing that they're doing. And one little thing goes out of whack and everybody loses their minds. It's an evolving game, you have to expect bugs like that. People expect, you know, like a, a game that got released and patched a couple of times. Oh man, this is an evolving game all the time. So good. You know what, I bet you this song is probably... Gonna mute us. I think it's on iTunes and things. I'm gonna take off Atlas, but.
Do I have a quick tip on making something glossy, Ghost Joe asks, painting-wise? Um, yes, actually. Oh, iTunes help. No, I don't need you, man. Um, here, let's do something. Oh, God, let's, uh, what do we do? What do we do? Something glossy. Okay, so check this out. I have this layer that looks like this. Uh, there we go. So it's just a black and I'm painting white on top of it, right? So if we turn that to color dodge and I've set it to like 10% or so. But let's say we paint, uh, we paint white on that. And we go pretty harsh on it. And say we want to make maybe the handle glossy. I mean, it should be darker to begin with, but you know, just go roll with me. This side, you kind of just roll the dodge over top of that. And what this dodge layer is going to be doing is uh, not only adding the a brightness and a contrast to it, but it also kind of saturates it at the same time, which is something really nice for glossiness. So you, check this out. Yeah, I'm start painting on top of this. And you can see that color kind of saturating over top of it. And what is this at? So this layer is at 10% right now, so if this should be, you know, more like 60% or something. So really start blowing out that whiteness that, you, that you're talking about. Let me make something glossy. Start painting those guys across some of the sections. This might be a little too strong, but you can blur it afterwards to kind of add a little bit of a gradient to it. But, you know, you, you, you pick your battles where you want those highlights to appear. And at the same time, you're keeping that color saturation in there, which is really nice. So then if you want to kind of soften some of those things, you can go to your blur brush, 50% or so. And start blurring away the edges. Get a little bit more of that blend into them. Maybe it's not as strong down here. But this is a really, really awesome technique. And it throws colors in there for you at the same time. Do you see that? I mean, that, that was like, what, maybe 15 seconds? Put this back to 10%. We'll go back to our painterly stuff. on the same brush now. Ah oh shit, I'm back on the dodge. Guess I hit undo. The undo thing always kills me. So I have to do like a marquee selection, deselect, and then brush again, and then if I undo it doesn't fuck it up anymore. I wonder why that was so weird. Yeah, we're working on the clinks at the moment. Wanderless. Uh, what's up, Dospa? Welcome back. I know what you're saying, RY. Some of them are pretty questionable. So most of the time that's because of publishers' fault. And like, we don't care, we want to put it out and make our money this quarter. Or we'll look back to investors, and we're gonna lose out on more money. And then it just becomes a whole business thing that usually fucks games over. Understandable, but super shitty. Crazy about the sun. Part we're working on just now. Uh, I want to see this part. I don't even know. It was okay. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, thank you, Rage. Appreciate it back, man. Smudge it out of the way. I messed that up a while ago, they didn't even notice. There we go. I think is this part where we're just working on. You should just hide the rest. It's cleaner. This dark line is getting it's two together the whole time, so I'm gonna maybe kill it towards the middle. A little bit. Let it, let it live a little bit more towards the end. And more into a green at the same time. live a little bit here and there. Not as strong. The normal should do some of that for us as well. Just kill it with color. Part up here, maybe larger brush. But doesn't need to be that distinct. So we'll kind of kill that line. I'll set along this section here. I missed that fall. Mm -hmm. A little too dark down here. I think I'm gonna kill it even more. More towards the bright section. So over here. We're gonna kill it a bit. Raynor, what up? Thanks for the follow, man. Oh shit, we got a full train going down. Julia, what's up, bro? Welcome to the lab workshop. That's still way too dark. Uh, let's use more of a red. And we're still blending both sides together here. Alright, that should be a little bit better. A little streaky, but the hardness will go away. 
Ferret, ferret, welcome aboard, man. Uh, do we do high to low bakes to get the lighting? So, uh, Jerry the Rat, we do a whole bunch of lighting bakes. We do a cavity bake, we do a normal map bake, we do a tangent, sorry, uh, it's a world map, normal map, and we do a tangent map, normal map. So that we can use the world map to get direction, and we usually use the green channel to get the top lighting, and use that as a mask to do other lighting and speed up the process of getting some of that top to bottom lighting done for Dota. A huge time saver. Uh, oh, hey, Julia. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. How are we doing on our timer over here? Uh, let's see. Oh, shit. This is the last bar before we switch over to our Undying set. You can see our bar right below there, our Clink's Texturing Timer. Three out of three. There's our third bar. If we finish that up, we'll jump over and uh, start working on the sculpt for... Uh, or continue working on the sculpt for Undying. Zombie character. We, we're turning him to a Viking, which is pretty cool. Uh, it was one of my favorite heroes for Dota, which uh, wasn't the case when we started the set a while ago. So we are just getting back to it now. And we ex can I explain a little bit on how I taught myself? And is that a badge of courage on the wheel? Badge of courage on the wheel. Um, no, it will, no. This is the medallion. I don't know if that's a different name for it. It's the medallion of courage, I guess. I th that's probably what you were getting at, uh, but yeah, it's the medallion from the game, from Dota 2. But instead of keeping the lion face on there, we turned the lion's face into a lion's skull. Even though it looks a little like Vanguard, because they used a skull from a lion or a cow or whatever, which are really similar. Uh, but yeah, that's the skull of a lion that we sculpted on there to go with the whole theme of Clinks being a skeleton as well. So they're both kind of cut cursed. So we switched that up as a little shout out to it and kind of works together really in a clever way. Uh, but yeah, since it's an item that he uses a lot in the game, we decided to throw the medallion into the middle of his uh, ship wheel. Yep, yep. Uh, talk about a little how I was taught myself. Oof, well, jeez, man. Uh, that was a long time ago when I got started doing models for Half-Life 1. And I actually just started doing skins for Half-Life 1. So just the textures, and that's how I started t transferring my classical art skills and bring them over to the digital format. And at that point, it was just you know super noob with Photoshop, but I was learning the, the the building blocks of how to use Photoshop and how to you know transfer all that knowledge that I had from just drawing my entire life uh, to at that point over to to digital and learning about layers and contrast and overlays and all that you know all the brushes and, and how everything worked together. And when you get started, you end up doing a lot of just like overlays and trying to find a way to make them work and forcing them on there instead of actually knowing how to use them. Uh, so if you're getting started, don't don't rely on just switching the overlay mode on your layers to try and get something that might look okay. You know, uh, try to think or try to look at how some people might have done it. Now that you guys have a lot more access to people streaming or videos on YouTube or Vimeo and all that stuff, you guys have a lot more access on learning than what when I got started. 17 years ago, or whatever the hell it is now. Uh, but getting self-taught, it's a lot of trial and error, it's a lot of working a lot, it's a lot of finishing work and starting new pieces, instead of getting uh, fixated on one thing. Do as much work, finish as much work as possible. And that's how you learn, and at the same time, try and copy other people's work, other artists, amazing artists that you look up to. Copy exactly what they did, you know, even if you don't, you can't call it your own, you'd be like, this is a practice piece that I took inspiration from this piece, and I was trying to learn this particular thing that he did amazingly well. And if you keep doing that, you start learning this, this learning blocks, which then you, you know how you create those things, how that guy created those things, and then you can use them in your own work, and then, you know, uh, derive your own style and your own pieces from that, but if you know those building blocks, you, you build yourself up as an artist, so that's the best advice I can give you. The Vanguard? Yeah, I mean, it's the, the skulls look so similar between, like, horses and jaguars and lions. And you'd be surprised, but... Uh, yeah, it's pro I don't know, it's probably a ram or something on Vanguard, no idea. They're all super, super similar. I researched this. <laughs> uh, we had a whole folder of like lion skulls.
Acre box, what's up, man? Need a little bit more brightness over here. Oh hell yeah. Yeah, keep the fellows coming, guys. What's up, Captain Canadia? Fellow Canadian, what's up, man? I got dual citizenship. Canada's one of them. Welcome to the lab workshop, man. Canadians are much appreciated here. Especially captains. Okay. There she goes. In the PSD file. Alright, that's getting uh, quite... Quite more readable. Uh, we we'll still have a black line down here I need to clean up. Kinda messed that up. Uh, but we'll grab a little bit darker color here. and Brush that stuff out. Uh, oh jeez, C Dodger, what's up? I think I got your name right. I promise nothing. I usually mess up everybody's name. And good tradition. Oh Jesus, Couchington? Yeah! Got it last second before he went away on <laughs> my display. <laughs> I only have those things show up for like six, seven seconds, and uh, probably like two or three seconds go by before I look over because I'm in the middle of a brush stroke. So yeah, good times. You guys ever wonder how oh, those Sith miss so many of those fellows? Now you know. A little bit more green towards the tips here. Keep that harmony of green towards the ends, towards the bottom of the model, in the Y space. Consistent across the model, it all rhymes together. This nice green towards the bottom. We've been put it on this loincloth, I'll show you in a second here. Try update this line. There it goes. A little bit, uh, yeah, a little bit dark. I think I want to make it flatter. Bring more of this brightness towards the edge. I don't like how dark that got to the bottom. But anyways, you guys can see, whoa, you guys can see down here. See the greens that I painted on here? Instead of just making it darker red, we, we threw those greens in there and it starts playing really, really well with the bottom of the coat and with the boots that have a lot of green shading on them. Almost as if it's like a, a fog, you know, from the sea or something, or the moss growing on them, or, you know, just something that Screams more of a, a sea aging than anything else. Works really well across the whole thing. That's why we have a lot of greens for the shadows too, like the underbelly of this wheel. We uh, added a lot of dark greens to it, so it doesn't. It's not as noticeable from the underside. It's creating a self-painted shadow on there, and it doesn't drown out the front of the model when you're looking at the front. You know, we don't want the wheel to be the attention for the front. We want the wheel to be the attention with the back. What's up, cute? Uh, cute tip? Oh, man. we read that right the first time. Uh, Crucion. No, I completely fucked. <laughs> What's that? Uh, the program is optimized right there in the cutwheel. Pyro Phoenix. Oh, yeah. What's up, man? You guys have foolishly followed us. Even though Gandalf actually says, fly, you fools. But see, most people don't know that. So we won't tell anybody, right? Only huge uh, Lord of the Ring nerds know that, like myself. <laughs> uh, I love I love Lord of the Rings. Oh my god, nerd! Goddamn right.
What's the command for the favorite hero? Oh shit, uh, uh... Dude, I can't even remember my fucking command. Let me look it up. I think it's favorite hero? Or fave with a knee. I think you're missing an E between the V and the H. Let me see our commands here. Yeah, you're missing the E, that's all. Uh -huh. Oh shit, you guys! How come nobody told me that we our bar changed? We were supposed to be working on the night now. We're like a few minutes into undying timer already. Oh god, what are you doing? Chrome help. Chrome help. Alright, we're gonna save uh, all these files. I don't think I even touched these guys. We'll come back to these guys in an hour though. So I'm sure we'll be starting for a long time today. Uh, but now, since we, we've been working a little bit on the, the headpiece here, more than anything, uh, cleaning up uh, this durag strips. And we also painted a little bit of the hair. I think we did a little bit of the durag, but not too much. And answered a whole bunch of questions. So uh, yeah, we'll switch over to Undying, because we are definitely eating up a little bit of the bar there for Undying already. Uh, oh, that's right, I did. I forgot what I did for the image for Favorite Hero. <laughs> yeah, bringing my MMR up way up now. <laughs> I needed it though, man. Who cares about versatility, honestly? <laughs> hey man, as long as I'm getting wins, I don't give a fuck about that graph. Okay, so there's our Clink's model for now. We're gonna switch over to Undying. Let's